Hi everyone, welcome to the Words Academy and today we are going to talk about The Lumber Room which is written by Hector Hugh Monroe, also known as Saki and we are taking into consideration one particular character, the only adult character in the story which is the aunt. So I'll be speaking in Sinhala and in English for the benefit of a wider audience and unfortunately I cannot speak Tamil, if I could I would have um, helped out in that way as well. But uh, taking a look at the aunt, right? she's a very complex character and her psychological makeup is quite um, extreme and, and very profound. It's a very complicated character. So let's take it apart and then take a look at some of her characteristics. The first one I would like to draw your attention to is the fact that she is dull and unimaginative. So I have a Nirmana Shivi thing, Tamo, Adukutkalek. Right? So the quotation I would like to use is that she was a woman of few ideas with immense powers of concentration. So the fact that she is incapable of um, a wider understanding of things or wider creativity shows or is reflected in the way that she denies creativity to the children as well. So we understand when Nicholas goes into the lumber room, he encounters or he uh, witnesses all these creative elements, right? These objects that are crafted out of a lot of creativity, like the lampstand, for example, the teapot and the books about birds, etc. So all of these creative elements are shut out or they are sealed and they are locked away in this lumber room and the kids are not given access to this creative space. So the whole story revolves around blocking this creative element from the children. It's about how many adults do not allow the children to be themselves. Many, many uh, people in the adult world, they deny this creativity and imagination of the children and they do not give enough encouragement or they do not foster this creativity. So the aunt being dull and unimaginative has a profound impact on these children. So, Nirman Shili think that Madhu can any sa age aga now same Nirman Shili think yutta deva aeva apna vasala dal the even aeka kamre the lumber room right. So, a lamainte aeva think sallantra na aeva ki deval dakhin na aeva jafare dekhe. Only in Manshi did fear, Taudurta, Vadi, Vadikaragan, Kisma, Vastava, Kabadina. So that's one of the characteristics of the aunt. The second one is that she is petty, vain, petulant, impetuous, and impulsive. Those are words that you can use. Um, it shows that she she is really Lama um, Kaiki Nagasa, right? Immature. Uh, for example, it says a few decent tears were looked for on the part of Nicholas. So she gains this sense of uh, achievement out of seeing Nicholas cry. So she desperately wants to see him cry. So that is kind of weird, right? Uh, it shows you that she seeks the satisfaction of breaking the spirit of the child. She wants to outwit Nicholas. So, Nicholas is a So, this characteristic is a very good thing. The third point is that she is an authoritarian parental figure. So there are four types of parenting that is usually uh, identified. So she falls under the category of authoritarian. So authoritarian parenting is a style of parenting where um, children are not given any voice. So the parent doesn't really listen to the complaints or the concerns of the child. There is no understanding, so it's not a two-way street where you talk, you listen, and there's feedback, 
there's a lot of that. There's just uh, arbitrary force used by the parent, and there's the focus is on discipline and punishment. Uh, rather, not discipline. The focus is on obedience and punishment. And uh, when we take a look at the punishment methods that she uses, we understand a little bit about this. It says in the book that, or the text that, she improvises something of a festival nature from which the offender would be rigorously debarred. Meaning, she doesn't want to explain to them what their mistake is and why it's something that they need to work on. Rather than doing that, she is focused on punishing them and making them feel less about themselves and making them feel guilty and ashamed, right? So, the next point, the fourth one, is that she is vindictive. She is malicious, she is sadistic, and she is callous. So these are four adjectives you can use to describe her. Kind of uh, tells you pretty much the same thing, right? Um, so examples of this. So I want you to think about two images, right? So if you remember these images, you will understand. It will be easier for you to apply it in your examination as well. Think about the boots, Bobby's boots. So Bobby wears these tight boots and he told you twice, but you wouldn't listen. You often don't listen to things that we say, that's what Nicholas says, right? So Bobby's boots, it tells you how torturous it was for Bobby to wear these tight boots on an expedition to the beach. So even though she has been told twice, she completely ignores it. That tells you a lot about the aunt, that she is not focused on the well-being or taking care of the children as much as she is focused on asserting her authority over them, right, or terrorizing the children to make them afraid of her. So that is what she's focused on. She's vindictive in that way, right. Um, and again, the second image is the image of the jars of strawberry. So there are four jars of strawberry in the um, cupboard, as Nicholas points out very clearly to the aunt when she is in the uh, rainwater tank. I know there are four jars of it in the cupboard, he says. So these are two images that you can really think about and kind of like memory points for you so that you remember it when you go for your exam. So think about Bobby's boots and the four jars of strawberry jam in the cupboard. So she does not even let these children enjoy these childhood delights of having some strawberry jam during uh, their tea or you know, their supper. So that shows you a little bit about the callousness of the aunt, that she denies them these pleasures. Um, and yeah, his boots are hurting him, they are too tight. So imagine how the shoe cuts into the feet of the foot, or the feet of the, um, or the ankle of Bobby, right? So vindictive means Paligan adahasa, paligan even. Malicious, it means uh, you want to hurt someone. Sadistic means you gain pleasure out of hurting someone. And here it seems that she has this um, weird or perverse sense of pleasure out of hurting the children. Uh, for example, making them feel guilty about themselves, making them feel like they don't deserve these pleasures. For example, the trips that she organizes. So these things are not done so that the kids can enjoy it, but it's it's organized so that the other children can be denied it. So this is a kind of pleasure that she um, derives by um, making them go through this kind of painful experiences or traumatic experiences. So that that's something really messed up about the aunt psychology, right? I would like to add a little bit to the third point where I said that it's focused on punishment and not discipline. So rather than telling the children, helping them build a good characteristics and good values, she doesn't teach them good values. She doesn't really focus on making the children better citizens. She's not focused on 
helping them out become a better person. She is more interested in inflicting pain, in inflicting these punishments, implementing these punishments on the children. So that tells you that her focus is on not um, discipline. So this is very important because it shows you that she wants to make them afraid of her. Fear is the main thing that drives uh, her control of the children. She tries to make them afraid of her as much as possible and, and by this fear she holds on to this authority she wields and she makes them submit to her by making them afraid of her. So she uses this power that she has as the adult like a tyrant, like an uh, despotic leader or a ruler, right? So it's fear that she ingrains in the children, fear and guilt. And the use of the evil one, it's again another element or you know, the, through the use of religion that she instills fear in the children so that they will listen to her, so that they will uh, be afraid of um, not obeying her. So it, it's not about discipline, it's not about the children becoming better citizens or building up their personalities or building up good values. It's about the children obeying her. So it's about them submitting to her completely. right? So the next point, the fifth one is um, the fact that she is threatened by Nicholas. So this might sound a little um, radical, but the truth is the aunt feels threatened by Nicholas. See, the creativity that Nicholas has, the imagination that he has, it's a threat because the fact that he is imaginative means that he can see beyond the reality. If you don't have imagination, you cannot see beyond your reality. And if you want to make a change about the way that things are, if you don't have the imagination to think about how you can change it, you won't be able to change it. So, Nicholas is a person who not only answers the question, but he questions the answer as well. So, if he is able to do that imaginatively, if he is able to see um, a better way that they can um, have this relationship between the aunt and the children, he, he will start questioning the way that the aunt uh, goes about handling them. So the aunt is threatened by Nicholas because Nicholas is not submit, does not submit. He does his spirit is not broken by these harsh treatments of the aunt. So this strong spirit of um, creativity and imagination that we see in Nicholas is what makes the aunt really really afraid of him. So she is threatened by Nicholas. And if you really think about it, it's kind of a critique about how authorities try to uh, rob creativity or imagination out of people so that they will not rise up against oppressive regimes. So that's for a later study. But these are the five most important points that I see in the aunt. And uh, it'll, I hope it will help you understand the psychology behind the way she behaves and, and how she perpetuates or instills fear in the children and she is more focused on the fear factor and, and obedience. She does not try, uh, she, her punishments are never meant to make the children uh, or to develop their discipline. So her punishments are just a method that she uses uh, to make them afraid of her so that she can continue, she can maintain her authority over them. It's about control. She wants to control them. So for Nicholas, she seems like she cannot control him. He is going out of control because he does not um, submit to her punishments. He does not submit to uh, her fear. So that's a little bit about the character of the aunt and if you have any questions please uh, send us in the comments and I will hopefully be able to address some of those questions. Thank you.